Welcome to another episode of Behind the Lens. Today I sat down with Captain Jay from the Crow's Nest talking about why he got into Sea of Thieves, why he does YouTube the way he does, who he watches, his addiction to Dr. Phil, and some lightning round questions that will probably surprise you. All that and more on today's episode of Behind the Lens. So, thank you so much, Captain Jay. Do you want it to be Captain Jay, or could we just say Jay? No, we can, we can just go with Jay. I've, even okay. my most recent videos, I just go by Jay now. It's so much easier. Okay. It rolls off the tongue a lot easier now. A little bit. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah. we're on, well, consider ourselves on land for this recording, and then we can get started. All right, you ready? Absolutely. You ready yep. to go? Yep, ready to rock and roll. All right, so uh, you run the Crow's Nest, which is one of the largest Sea of Thieves YouTube channels, definitely one of the most active and connected. that is is correct. And about two years ago, you started up and you said, Sea of Thieves... Three years ago. Three years ago next month. Really? Yeah, Yeah, that's true. Three years ago, March, yeah. Yeah, YouTube just hasn't rolled over the the dates on, on the thumbnails that I'm looking at right now. So you know, March March thirteenth is the official birthday of the Crow's Nest. March thirteenth, but exactly go. a week before the anniversary of Sea of Thieves. Coincidentally, there you go. Quite cool. So, did you do any YouTube before this channel? And if and if you did, what drew you to making a new channel to focus on Sea of Thieves? So. No, I did not do any YouTube content creation myself, but I was always on the platform, you know, from a viewer standpoint. Um, What drove me to create a channel of my own, it was in a weird way, my way of like paying it forward because growing up, I always used things like GameFAQs or, you know, like the internet in general, Um, like those old like Bradley guides or Brady guides, whatever they were called back in the day. The, the Brady uh, guides. Yeah, those those old school, old school, uh, old school guides, and it was kind of my way of just kind of paying that forward. Like the fact that I was able to take advantage of that stuff for so long, whether you know it was for free through Game Facts or you know other forums or something like that. I figured here's a game that I'm really interested in, and I kind of want to do you know what I what I was basically using in the past. I want to do that for somebody else. I never really thought it would take off the way it did. Uh, that's, you know, I'm obviously super happy with that and super grateful for it, but it, it, it grew to a level that still blows my mind today. Um, but that's how it got started. You know, that's how it got started. I was always interested in the history and, and pirates in general. And I remember watching the E3, I think like 2015 trailer. I think it's 2015 trailer at this point. I would and think so. Yeah. Really, the very yeah, first. Yeah. Yeah. The very, very first like reveal. And I remember just kept being drawn to it and watching the whole Xbox presentation, um, but just being drawn to that. And I was like, what was that? And immediately I was like, I need to know more. And from there on out, I just kind of dedicated myself to the channel. And I was like, all right, I need something piratey, but still kind of generic, not too specific to Sea of Thieves, but still like thematically in line with a pirate game. And I was like, the crow's nest. I was like, I like that. Kind of like the, you know, the way it sounds, you know, it's like a little vantage point. You can see the news you can oh you know you can oversee things in general from this higher higher you're the first one with eyes on something before yeah yeah yeah, exactly so i was like you know what let me let me kind of stick with that like there's there's a couple of different ways to interpret it and i i just you know it just fits so one thing that i have noticed in your videos and even we spoke about a bit which is why we're doing audio only for this is that you have kept it to exclusively in-game footage. Was that yes. a personal decision or was that a technical one? You just don't have a webcam and you've never bothered to go buy one. It is It is a little bit of both. Um, so if like if people do some digging, um, there, there are some photos of me out there and there is some like video footage of me out there, like from my early days, like sitting down with the, with the developers and like interviewing them face to face. Um, and just like, you know, community spotlights and stuff like that through the Sea of Thieves. So my face is out there, but I don't have a webcam (laughs) to to put it just, you know, as straightforward as possible. And I like, as far as like streaming and, and that sort of stuff, um, or just using the camera for that purpose, 
I don't know. I'm kind of awkward. You know, you put me like if I get put on the spot, I might like freeze. I might, you know, like it, believe it or not, I, I have to go through so many takes because a lot of my a lot of my videos are, are pre-scripted ahead of time. And I just, you know, edit the script and edit the script. And lately I've tried to wing it a little bit more, um, you know, just kind of whatever comes to mind and just follow a little bit of a looser script. But the amount of takes and retakes that I have to do. If I was on camera, oh man, that would be. It, it definitely does increase that a little bit. Just yeah. trying to go off the cuff more. I can sympathize there. Yeah, so so that's that's where it comes down to. It was just a matter of you know, uh, kind of keeping myself private, but also not putting myself on the spot. If that makes sense. Um, that makes sense. So yeah, so I don't know. I know people are like, are you ever going to start streaming? I'm like, I I, I think about it. But I don't know if I'll ever like put my face out there. Maybe I'll just put like a little cartoon or a little moniker of some sort and be like, that's me. <laughs> and then well, just leave it there. Even with streaming, as much as people expect it, a webcam isn't required. You can look at some exactly. of some of the top ten streamers. They still have not put they don't regularly put a webcam on their footage. They just capture footage as clean as possible. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Exactly. And and that's and at least for me, at least with the with the YouTube channel. Like the presentation was always almost like a like a TV show of sorts, where it was less me, more more I guess content driven, and I kind of put myself in the in the background or you know out of the spotlight and just kind of just wanted to focus on the narration. You mentioned yourself out of the spotlight, but just recently, like just a day or two ago, you announced that you were going to be very much in the spotlight. On, yes, yes. At the, by the time this is out, you already have been on the Rare stream. You're going to be taking part right. in the weekly stream with Rare. Yeah, I, I just did it. I just did it uh, this week, um, and it was awesome. Um, and it helped. It helped that I had met the developers um, in person before, and I've and I've had conversations with them. So a little bit of that, I guess, anxiety or nervousness. You know, the the, the little. Uh, well, I guess just the nerves, really. Uh, we're kind of out of the way, um, but it was it was great fun. Um, it was it was off to a slow start. I know, like the weekly challenge itself was really really hard. It was the more the merrier. Try to get as many people um, that you find out in the seas on board your ship, and I was like, that's that's tough because you know when I play Sea of Thieves, if I see a ship barreling towards me, it's probably gonna end in some kind of gunfight of some sort. So just the concept alone, I knew was gonna be challenging, but it was tons of fun. It was it, it blew my expectations out of the water. You know, I thought it was just going to be very straightforward and more or less to a script. But I had I had a great time um, playing. I, I genuinely wish it did not end. I mean, two hours flew by, and it's crazy to even think that was two hours. But I had so much fun um, playing with the devs and just you know trying to get some C of T's out of them and just you know exploring the world in general and just goofing around. It was total. It was total total fun all the way through. You did very much start as doing just Sea of Thieves content, even with your branding. It was very Sea of Thieves yep. oriented. But over time, especially during kind of a bit of a lull, when I personally kind of fell off the game, mm -hmm. and you you supplemented with covering games like Strange Brigade and right, Battlefield yep. 5. And, yeah, and I, I toyed around with the Battlefield... Uh, Battlefield. I, tried, I toyed around with the Battlefield 5 uh, momentarily, and... It's a very ambitious game, and it does get tricky trying to balance a lot of things. Um, I think from a content creator standpoint, it's tricky to try to manage multiple games, um, especially if you don't do you know YouTube full time or anything like that. Uh, so I had to kind of sit there and figure out, all right, well, what's what's the most important for me? You know, what's is, which is the one that I'm most that I'm most uh, passionate about as far as a content creator goes? Because I still play Battlefield Five. Um, regularly, like I, I still play that regularly. I still play Strange Brigade. I, I have the Strange Brigade like lore book, and I read through that. Um, but I, just for the sake of, I guess, limiting the amount of gray hairs that I have and not driving myself crazy, I kind of sit there and I'm like, all right, what am I really going to focus on? You know, can I still dabble with other games? Of course, I, I don't want to just limit myself to Sea of Thieves in the long run. Even though I can definitely see that happening, like not in a bad way, just as a matter of just covering it in long term. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, it's just a matter of, you know, can I can I find the right balance between YouTube, you know, personal life, between my own gaming because 
YouTube takes up a lot of time, you know, and that's a lot of time. You, that's a lot of time you could be gaming, you know. So I'm just there and I'm like, oh, I could be playing this game right now. But instead, I'm covering this game right now. And there's a massive difference between. You mentioned balance and you mentioned trying to find time for your online hobbies as well as any potential offline hobbies. So uh -huh. is there something you do? out in the real world to balance out the time you spend working on YouTube videos or playing games, just something else to mix things up. So for me, it, it actually works out in my favor that as far as Sea of Thieves goes, which is the bulk of the channel, which is, which is pretty much the, the main focus of the channel right now, it helps that there is a set schedule for them as far as when they release stuff. Um, and how they go about releasing it. So the fact that they're on a schedule allows me to work my own schedule around that, if that makes sense. Like I know yep. when you like, like Wednesdays, you know, developer update. And I know I can look forward to that Tuesdays, you know, weekly stream. So there's going to be some kind of teases. So with that in mind, if I know that Tuesday, Wednesday, there's stuff going on in terms of, you know, just information flowing out, then either Wednesday night or, you know, Thursday, then that's when I start to focus on, on my, on my end and you know by the end of the week by thursday night by friday morning i have i have something ready to go um but before that you know when the game first came out i, I thought it was tricky because when the game first came out the devs now that the game is out in the wild they didn't have too much of a set schedule uh just yet so i, mm -hmm. I was kind of in a funk like what do i do you know how do i how do i find the information because before it was a lot it was a lot more consistent, a lot more straightforward. But now that the game's out in the wild, now there's less to you know talk about. There's less to show, and there's more to do. So it was tricky for me trying to find that trying to find that balance uh, back and forth. But now you know, three years later, almost, um, I, I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. And it's it's not perfect. I still, you know, sometimes I'm still there and I'm dreading it. And I'm like, oh my god, you know. What am I doing? Do I really want to do this right now? I could be doing something else. I have to do something else, you know, real life stuff. But um, it's 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 a struggle that I think a lot of people aren't aren't aware of. Uh, but as long as you're still having fun with it at the end of the day, I think I think it's good. Oh yeah, if, of if course. It feels like yeah. If it feels too much like a chore, if it feels too much like work, or too much of a burden that you're just you know you have to rather than you want to. I think that's when you kind of have to to lay off a little bit, and I and I try that myself. You know, I I try to do like two, three, four videos um, a week in the past, and I have done that a couple of times where it was like three videos a week, four videos a week. It was like a Battlefield video, a, a, a Strange Brigade video, a Sea of Thieves video, this that, you know, speculation, a gameplay. It, but that's that's tough after a while, especially if you have you know stuff going on in general. It's it's hard because you don't want one to suffer, you know just for the sake of it yeah you want to put out the best content you can without messing up your real life right right and, and vice versa you know you don't want to mess up you don't want to mess up the youtube because of the real life so it's a it's a weird balance you have to play um like i, I would love to dive right in i don't know if i would be much more successful um not that that matters <laughs> you know it's it's not about that but it's it's just it's just you're walking you're walking a fine line you know you're just trying to trying to keep afloat trying oh no pun, how yeah, no pun intended. appropriate of a pun yeah no no pun intended just trying to keep afloat just oh. recently summit started doing a lot of content in sea of thieves and streaming and he's definitely more pvp mm -hmm. focused and he likes messing with people and it seemed at the very beginning, there were aspects of the Sea of Thieves community who were very much butting heads with him about how the game should be played. What did what was your take on him jumping into Sea of Thieves and then the impact it might have had on the game as a whole? So I know for me personally, when I played, um, even before you know Summit joined, like literally from the get go, um, I was always more in tune with PvP on the seas. I know some people might be surprised by that, but uh, my my first reaction, you know, whenever I encountered another player, another crew, uh, was usually engaged in some sort of fashion. Um, even though there were instances where, you know, we, we, we linked up, we made an alliance, whatever it might be. But my, my own focus was always more... The rule, not the exception. Right. Um, 
And when when Summit came along, I thought it was good in terms of you know eyes being driven toward uh, Sea of Thieves, like the the traffic being driven towards the game, because that's when the whole Shrouded Spoils update came about, and that was like for me that was like the resurgence of Sea of Thieves because it made the world feel more alive in the long run, which is something that a lot of people were you know critical of, and, and myself included. You know, there's videos of me you know, openly saying, you know, I wish we had X or, you know, we could do a better job with Y or whatever it might be. And I feel like Shrouded Spoils addressed a lot of those concerns um, or, or started the process in addressing some of those concerns because, you know, not everything is perfect in the game. And that's why, you know, we're still uh, trying to achieve, you know, the the ultimate pirate game, if you will. Um, and I say we like I'm a developer, but you know what I mean, the community. <laughs> well, there's um, there's definitely that investment from the community as a whole. They say this is our game. They very much act. There's ownership there. And I think that's true of any yeah. fandom to some degree. But yeah. it is above and beyond in what I've seen in, in Sea of Thieves. Yeah, and I, and I think that's why I think that's why the community overall had such a strong reaction to Summit in general. Um like I, I watched, I did watch some of his streams and the highlights on YouTube, and some stuff was entertaining. And I, I don't know if there was if there was an unfair backlash um, right out the gate. I mean, were there some things that were you know could be criticized? Of course, you know whether it was the smack talk or the way to go about doing it. But at the same time, then there was also those you know those positive moments. So y- you have to kind of you have to take you know the the, the two gameplay aspects or, or the the ways of playing the game hand in hand and I know there was a huge backlash in the community um, and I, I don't know I don't know because like for me it was always like I said my 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 first encounter was always more PvP driven you're going in guns um, blazes regardless yeah like I was going in I was going guns <coughs> blazes uh, guns blazing regardless um, but as far as like uh, at least for me right from my standpoint um, when when those extra eyes came to the game, when that extra attention came to the game, when more and more people jumped into the game, in a weird way, the game did get a little bit more hostile in terms of player interaction, not resorting to like gameplay aspects, but just like, you know, voice comms or just chat in general. Like there was a weird, there was a weird little time period where people were just, you know, telling like telling each other off and just resorting to a whole bunch of name calling. I was just there like, oh, this is... This is new, you know. This isn't the game I remember. It's um, and definitely I think that's a why change. The devs, yeah, and I think that's why the dev, you know, that's why the devs came out. That's why Joe, you know, came out in that video, you know, reiterating the pirate code, you know, you know that none of that abusive behavior would be tolerated. And um, like I, I saw instances, or like I watched instances of it um, on social media or on YouTube of just like the type of name calling because I experienced it myself, but not to the levels that some other people experience. And I was like, wow, that's that's all types of wrong. Yeah. Um, and, and like that's that's where, where that's where I draw the line. Like you know you can you can engage. I mean hell, I I do it all the time. You know you can you can silly banter back and forth, but the second it gets a little bit like too too crazy, that's that's you know that's when you just gotta chill out. Like it's not it's not necessary. It's it's not cool. So that was my that was my take on it. Like you want to you want to engage. You want to troll a little bit. You want to, you know, hide on, on board somebody's ship. You want to mess with them. Like, he, like Summit, as a player, did some really interesting things. Um, like, some really cool um, tactics. Some really cool... Uh, there are some really good clips that I have seen, oh, for sure. Oh, absolutely. Like, there's there's no denying that. Where I think he, he snuck aboard a galleon, and three out of the four players were using mics, and the fourth player wasn't and he took advantage of that and literally you know was using proximity chat to pretend he was the fourth player um and was just getting you know the crewmates to to hide you know or not hide but to place the loot in the rowboat or something like that. i forget but that's to me that's genius you know i, I can't i can't knock that even in the slightest <laughs> but i think i think when people you know take it to another level not him or, or anyone in general but i think when people take it to that other level like that insulting level. That's that, when it's know, not okay. People down. Yeah, that's when it's not okay. Um, like, you know, like, don't get me wrong. Playing video games, you get frustrated at times when somebody beats you, whether it's like Mortal Kombat, you know, online, when you get sniped, you know, with like a noob tube, 
like half the map away oh Call man Duty that is battlefield or something that is a that, word i have not yeah, heard like, in a long time yep yep dating myself a little bit but when you know when you get when you get hit with something like that when you get you know y- y- of course you get mad that doesn't mean you have to go on a full-on tirade and you know use every word in the dictionary like, yep there's no there's no point in that you know just move on but you mentioned battlefield 5 a couple times now yep. it, either before we got started or afterwards what games do you play that you don't cover at all what games have you sort of kept as yours whether they're single player titles or there are other multiplayer games that you just don't make youtube videos on at all um hmm. awesome question rocket league i do play oh, a fair amount uh, i so do play good. a fair amount of rocket league yeah um i love the uncharted series um what else? What else? What else? What else? Oh, um, I I have a thing for just adventure games in general. Um, okay. And my yeah, and my guilty pleasure that I've always that I always fall back on, and some people know this is Guild Wars Two. Oh, and, and that's about it. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's that's the one I fall back on, Guild Wars Two. Um, I haven't played it in a little while, but I always log in. I'm just you know. Still there, still keeping up with the Reddit. <laughs> still you know. there, still, still there. I've been there since you know, since the Head Start weekend, you know, since before launch. I've been playing it nonstop. I was a fan of Guild Wars One, you know, Guild Wars Factions. That's my jam. Kurzik all day. You know that that's my thing. You know, Ritualist. You know that was my profession. I'm Very still cool. For them to add it, yeah, like that's that's my thing. Um, but those are the games I, I kind of play. I mean, if you look at my like. If you were to look at like my achievements, like I, I dabble in pretty much everything, but I don't commit to too much. If that makes sense, just very few games that I actually kind of stick through and try to grind out achievements or something. And just, like that. I mean, because like you said earlier, you can only manage so many games at one time. Yeah, exactly. Right. You you can't do you can't do everything. I mean, I wish uh, that'd be awesome. Oh, that'd be um, great. But yeah, but you know, I, like my backlog is probably just as messy as most people's. You know, it's it's just filled with games. I'm like, one day. You know, I'm just looking at it like, one day. Steam like sale right comes have, around. It's like, oh, oh don't I even, should yeah. get this just in yeah. case I have time in six years to play it. Yeah, like I've bought Skyrim God knows how many times on PC. <laughs> on Xbox. Todd like, Howard, yeah, you son of a... <laughs> you know, and it's just one of those things. And the best part is I haven't even finished it. <laughs> really? You know, I haven't, yeah, I haven't even finished it. And it's just one of those things that I don't know if it's that I'm impatient with games in general. Or if I just, you know, fall back on, on like, mindless grinding or something like that. Like, whether it's Rocket League or something like Battlefield or something. I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, but when I, when I find a good game that I, that I love, I, I really do stick to it. So, there's not many, but the ones that you have is extremely deep connections to them. Yeah, yeah. Like, my, my games library, like I said, is disgustingly in the hundreds you know whether it's been free games or just like gifted games or just purchase games that i just haven't gotten around to um or i just get around to way late in the game like i started up diablo 3 fairly recently and i kind of fell off of it oh nice and i'm kind of yeah and i'm kind of tempted to get back on but i know there's seasons and i'm not that big into diablo so i'm like what does that mean for me do i gotta re-roll a character what's going on um, you know, another game that I want to get into, and I, I was hardcore into it for a little while, was like, you know, uh, what is it, Dark Souls Three, and then I, I kind of, you know, you chicken out. Tr- tr- yeah, yeah. Truth, truth, truth be told, I kind of chicken out. I get nervous, you know, sweaty palms, and there I am, like, I can't do this. I gotta, I gotta put this down. Same thing with like Cuphead. Like these are all games that that are tons of fun for me, and for one reason or another, I just put down and. I'll come back to hopefully one day. You'll get there eventually. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I'll get there eventually. So here's a question for you. Who are you watching on YouTube right now? Um, Ooh. Does it have to be games related or can it just be anything in general? Absolutely anything. This is about you, not about the game. So Awesome. So I am a, let's see... Philip DeFranco. Stalling, uh, stalling to get your subscriptions page up. I see how it is. No, no, I'm, I'm going off the top of my head. Um, there's a there's a few channels that I that I definitely 
definitely go to. Um, Philip DeFranco, just because he's entertaining. He's been around. Like I said, before I did content creation myself, I was watching his old OG stuff, YouTuber, yeah. Yeah, and he's he's been doing it for so long. Um, like like I remember like way back in the day, like the whole Ray William Johnson, all those all those people, like way back. I've been watching for for years. It feels like, um, but I still I still follow him. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Tim Tracker. Like his thing is all about um, his thing is all about uh, what's the, what's the word? Uh, theme parks. I was gonna say roller coasters, but it's not just roller coasters. It's theme parks in general, like Disney and Universal Studios. So I think oh, that's cool. really interesting. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Him and his wife, and they you know they're season pass holders and they're always in and out talking about you know what are the changes coming to the theme parks. And to me, that's just interesting. Because I like seeing, you know, worlds in general come to life like that. I like seeing the construction of it. Um, the rides are cool too, but I'm more interested in like the, you know, the theming. I'm more interested in like the experience. I'm more interested in the construction and details. So that's 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 a channel that I. That's really interesting. Focus on. Okay. Yeah, and those are things that probably you know most people wouldn't even wouldn't even pick up on. Um, but I, I do watch that. I, I still, you know, guilty pleasure. Um, Doctor Phil. Truth be told, Doctor really? Phil on YouTube. Yep, Doctor Phil on YouTube, and um, and I love watching uh, Penn and Teller's Fool Us. Oh, that's uh, yep, that's, that's so good. That's Probably not official anywhere, but there's definitely Probably a bunch not of copies. Official, but exactly, not official anywhere. But the amount of clips out there, um, you know, I'm just kind of sitting there and I'm like, this is amazing. You know, I know it's you know I know there's a logical explanation to it, but I just love watching you know people you know perform in, in that sense with with magic um i'm a sucker i'm a sucker for like card tricks i know there's a whole bunch of different types of like magic tricks in general but i yeah it's cool if you can if you can make somebody levitate but for me i'm i'm much more fond of the up close you know up close magic with like coins and card tricks and stuff like the that. the street like magic things yeah like those things are much more interesting <laughs> to me um so i that's that's what I focus on on YouTube, you know, whether it's the theme park stuff or the magic stuff or, or just old school YouTubers in general. But that's that's you, where I usually go. That's really cool. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. No, I was going to say most people probably wouldn't even pin that on me. They're probably like, you probably watch pirate videos all day. I'm like, no, surprisingly, no. Well, <laughs> like, that's, no. that's kind of the point of the show is the person behind yeah. the channel, not just the channel itself. Not just the channel, yeah. Because sometimes people forget YouTubers are people too. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And I like my Dr. Phil. What can I say? You know, I like sitting there and I'm just like psychoanalyzing people. And I don't have a, I don't have the background at all. But I'm like, wow, that is very interesting. That is a weird, weird take on stuff. And it's just That's very really cool. So on the flip side of things exactly opposite talking about og youtubers and people who have been on the platform for the better part of a decade if somebody is just yeah. starting up and getting engaged with any game or any hobby on youtube is there any sage advice or pitfall or make sure you don't do blank that you would pass on to a potential next wave of up-and-coming content creators yes i would say for sure um there's, there's obviously a ton of knowledge on YouTube, like how to get your channel started, how to get this going, how to get that going. And what I've noticed is a lot of people, and I, I fall victim to this too, you know, I'm guilty of it as well. Like a lot of people will focus on, you know, what's next? Like what's the best that I can buy? What's the best program I can download? What's the best this or what's the best that? But for me, I think regardless if you're using, you know, iMovie or, you know, Adobe or, you know, Windows Movie Maker, whatever it is that you're going to use. Windows Movie Maker. Oh, yeah, man. Exactly. Whatever, whatever it is that you're going to use, like, learn to use it and learn to use it well. Like, legitimately become a master at what you're doing before you decide to move on to that next level. Because you have to get the foundation going somewhere. You know, you have to get the basics going somewhere whether it's just to understand transitions or whether it's to understand intros and outros or just volume levels and, you know, like ducking in terms of audio or whatever it might be before you're like, well, I need to buy myself, you know, Final Cut Pro or I need to buy myself this <coughs> or I need to buy myself that. I think, I think it's important to, to learn what you have, to master what you have. And then if you need to move from there, then do so. 
but don't just come out swinging and like, well, I need, you know, I need a rig, I need this, I need that, I need the top mic, I need... The no. the temptation to buy all the pretty toys yeah. is very much there. I still have to fight against it all the time. Yeah, exactly. Me too, me too. And it's just one of those things that, you know, like, for a long time, like, my... And, and they sound awful. But if you go back, and I've left them there as a reminder to myself and just anybody who's curious. Um, but, like, for a long time, I was using, like, a Logitech headset, like, gaming headset to make my videos. And, God, the audio quality is rough. But um, but they're videos, you know, and they and they got hits, you know, not you know tens of thousands but you know that's that's how i got started and i I think anyone can get started regardless of how much money they have or how much experience they have Uh, like i'm totally self-taught i i have no formal training whatsoever in any of the stuff i do i'm a hundred percent self-taught and it it shows you know if you look at where my stuff is now and i'm not saying it's it's perfect by any means there there's still no but there's there's evolution there Exactly. Exactly. There's still there's still avenues that I want to explore and, and take my own videos to that I, I just haven't figured out how to do yet. Um, but you know where I where I am today in terms of the channel, it's only there because of all the mistakes and all the learning that I've done. You know, yesterday and and the, and the day before that and so on and so forth. Um, so I think for anybody who's getting started out, the the most important thing is to figure out you know what you're what you're working with. Don't worry too much about the the material don't worry about you know covering the next big thing whatever it is you do just present it well do it well do it professionally you know put your put your best foot forward kind of deal and you know it it won't it won't always land just right uh but with time and with practice and and that's key you know you, you need to devote a lot of time to it and a lot of practice to it with time and practice it'll work itself out in the long run not overnight but it you know, it is a marathon and not a sprint. Exactly, absolutely. There is there is no doubt about that in my mind that that's exactly what YouTube is. I mean, is I, would I love a viral video right now? Sure, that'd be cool. Is it going to happen? Maybe. I don't. I don't think so. But you know, it's 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 just one of those things. It's it's a marathon, not a sprint. And you know, you have to be in it for the long haul. You know, you don't want to be like a one hit wonder. And, and Very true. Thing. Okay, time for some, (laughs) to completely go off of what we just said, time for some controversial opinions that will undoubtedly get people angry. Are you ready for a quick little lightning round? Uh, Pineapple belongs on pizza, but yes. That is actually the first question, so good job. You're reading my script. You've obviously watched these ahead of time. (laughs) Is a hot dog a sandwich? No. Is a hot dog a taco? No, not even close. (laughs) What would be your superpower? Um, fly. What is your favorite movie? Ooh, oh my god. I legitimately have no idea. Oh, no. Oh, um, no. Something I can watch over and over again. It's either Jurassic Park or Saving Private Ryan. Both, one or the other. both very solid answers. What is your dream yeah. job? Oh, I would create uh, movie sets or I would work on theme parks myself. That's what I would do. Not on the rides, but like developing designing the, the park itself. as a whole yeah it d- exactly designing that i would i would do the sets or you know on a movie set on a stage and on a tv show or in a theme park that's what i would do very cool what is your biggest fear my biggest fear is oh man um what is my biggest fear uh just say bears. open water open water yeah, uh, that yeah, is ooh, open water really open water is a little bit freaky yeah, yeah so do I you that, have that, that feeling in the pit of your stomach when you're stranded from your boat in the middle of the game uh yes legitimately yeah i'm, a, I'm actually kind of afraid to look down as silly as that sounds it kind of freaks me out i know where you're coming from that could totally freak you out if you could delete a word from the internet what would it be oh my god um Oh, man. So many acronyms just flew through my mind at once. Uh, uh, what to decide? What to decide? Let's go with lit. <laughs> L-I-T. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that one. One of many. Let's go with that one. Let's Fantastic. That one. <laughs> so, but, oh, geez, there are going to be so many people who are going to throw that in the comments now. You absolutely know it's going to be true. So if yep. people want to be able this to find you lit. to be able to throw lit in the comments of any of your videos, <laughs> where can people find your content online? So my, my main my main platform right now is youtube.com slash the crow's nest. No apostrophe, just the crow's nest, just like that. Um, or they can find me over on Twitter on uh, 
Crow's Nest underscore TCN. Just like Crow's that. Nest that underscore the Crow's Nest. Yep. Yeah. Crow's Nest underscore TCN. And then YouTube.com slash the Crow's Nest mm. with no apostrophe. Very cool. But Jay, thank you so much for sitting down with me and having this conversation. Oh, I really appreciate it. it was tons of fun. And we yeah. totally need to jump into a game sometime. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm always down. Whether it's Battlefield, Rocket League, or Sea of Thieves, I'm I'm in. I'm willing to Dark ruin Souls your KD in any good. of those games <laughs> without a Sounds problem. Good. Have a Sounds good night. Good. You too, man. Have a good one. Thank you for watching this episode of Behind the Lens, and a huge thank you to Captain Jay for joining me and sitting down for a great conversation that went in a couple of surprising places. If you want to know more about the series, you want to suggest people that I should be talking to next, be sure to go check us out over on Patreon. Episodes go there early, and this series was spawned from their support. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next week for another episode. Bye-bye, everybody.